I'm really curious about how you pitched the show and what kind of reactions you got uh, initially. Um, to the, the network and the yeah. studio? Uh, it was interesting how it happened. Uh, Ryan, um, I was not really in on the pitch. when I By the time like I kind of come in, I, this, is, this is sort of originated as, like a, uh, as an idea for a film, and then um, Ryan had an overall deal with Fox. They knew what a talent he has and like a sort of iconoclast and like what um, I think he he they were sort of looking for a show with music. He was looking to like do a show with music, and that sort of like happened. And then um, so in a way, I mean, my, my experience was when I went in, like when when I first met with he and Brad, the other the, the our other co-creator, like that. Um, it was it was really it was weird. I, uh, he was just like, yeah, like we're um, like want to do this when I kind of turn this into like a network TV show. He's like, it's uh, it's sort of already bought. Like it's don't really have to pitch it. Like, it was really why I was like, what? Like I just got on a plane. Like this is really really weird. Like this is how like Hollywood works. So um, that said, I think like what he um, I think Fox is smart. They they had. Um, they saw like a, a kind of a wrinkle in like media and like TV that like hadn't worked for years, which is like a, a scripted musical. Um, particularly when the number one show over the past like decade has been a non-scripted musical. So like it just it just kind of um, and it's one of those ideas that it's, it now kind of seems like like duh, I can't believe a lot of people didn't think of that, but they didn't like it. It's, how it happened. So it, it's, it's sort of, for me, it's just kind of this backwards way to kind of end up where we are. Um, it uh, it took a lot of foresight by like a lot of people other than me as well, just like with the. Um, next question. Okay. Yeah. What's the scoop for next season? Anything we should know about or excited about? <sighs> what can I, um, what can I say? Um, we have. We're bringing in like several new, like awesome characters. Um, uh, some of which will be called from from our like nationwide MySpace oh, yeah. search auditions. We'll be looking uh, through those. Others won't be. Other um, bringing in some uh, couple new teachers or a couple of students, and um, it's good. I, I, from from my mind, totally this sh- this show. Um, it it sort of steps up in the second season. Right? It's a little bit. It's not just anymore about kind of a ragtag bunch of like kids like putting on a show. Like it's now like a different. They're at a different level. And what and what changes then? What changes when like your uh, your biggest concern is not about like um, making friends or like getting everybody involved. So like, well, what if we want to actually win? Like, what if we when we almost did. Like, what would that happen? And like, what sacrifices you make that way? So it's a it's a shift. It's a, um, uh, it's very much there in their like sophomore year of this and the changes that happen there. So, um, hi. Uh, I wanted to ask after the hiatus, it felt like there were a lot more uh, songs in each episode, mm-hmm. um, and I, I mean, obviously the downloads, you know, were very popular and the albums were very popular. I was wondering what the decision was behind using a lot more. Songs for that well, I think we did. We w- we would go in, in some of the first thirteen. There's a couple episodes where there's I think there's one episode of our fewest. I think there's maybe four songs. There's actually two, just two mashups. Which um, I think we just realized that like the structure of the show, the act structure of the show, could actually sustain that that amount of music. That like we were actually probably under performing in a way of like what we could do. I, it didn't. To my mind, as far as I know, it didn't have much to, for the creative and didn't have anything to do with like sales or wanting to get like top of the charts or whatever. Like that's just not that isn't foremost in our mind. That is a, that is like a concern because it helps offset our costs and it's totally wonderful. It's like, oh, like like there's a gold record in my office, which is like stupid. <laughs> <laughs> what? Like, okay, okay, like well, I don't even feel weird even putting it up. It's like, I don't know if I deserve that, but like. Um, Anyway, we just kind of realized that, like, and, and it, it, the music uh, for the show really adds sort of like, uh, there's an effervescent quality that sort of kind of lifts it, and which you don't need to do all the, all the time, but when you can, you want to do it because, like, it, um, the show really, like, can, um, the show can hold it, and, like, 
we, we always we never wanted to do like, seem like we're cramming in music. The, the music still has to has to further the story. That's when those tracks work the best. And oddly enough, that those, those ones that the, the tracks that are most uh, tied into story and storyline and character are always the ones that sell better. So like it's actually in our in our best interest to really integrate the music um, and to not just have it be a, a, essentially like a, a, a way to sell a record. That's just not how um, it doesn't interest me. It doesn't interest us. Mm. Uh, so Glee was recently just at the center of a controversial news world or, or sorry Newsweek article mm -hmm. about how gay actors can effectively play straight actors. What was your reaction to sort of being thrust into that, and how did the cast react? I don't. I actually don't, don't know how the cast reacted. Um, it was because it was late enough in our season where we were pretty much wrapping up. It's it's hard. It's hard to know what to say about it. Um, I don't feel like I have that much to contribute. With that in mind, like this is what I would say. But like I think that it um, people can write whatever they want to write. Like we get to say things. Other people get to say things. It 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 does sort of still fascinate to think to me that like I guess we are still kind of obsessed with like where people, like, put their genitals. Like, that's just a fascinating thing. Like, I guess we still all sort of giggle at that. And I guess what I would say is that, like, the generation behind us, like, e even beyond my generation, like, this new generation, like, is officially not going to care. Like, they already kind of don't care. Like, it's really not an issue, and it's fine. It's more, I just want to sort of say to, like, the editor of that, to be like, the more you kind of, like, feed that beast, um, I think the more you're gonna have to like sort of apologize to your grandchildren or kind of explain it to be like, yeah, it was like a while ago, and, like gay people couldn't marry, and it was really weird, and like sorry, like, I didn't really know how, but like that, it just seems like such a retrograde argument, and that's where like I have nothing to add to it. You're just like, really, are we talking about this? Like it's just not, um, you know. That said, the world is better for having Newsweek in it. Like it's a wonderful publication. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's all it's all fine. Like it doesn't in the scheme of things. It just is to me. It just is a reminder again of like where people where people are at, and it it is surprising. It is surprising that like it is 2010. Like we probably couldn't couldn't move on, and, and it's just and it, and the good thing is that like soon as we will. It's just not going to be an issue. Like we have a we have a black president. It's awesome. <laughs> things change. It's great. <laughs>